welcome to East End United, those of you who are with us in person in a very small group and those who are with us online. We gather in this different format today on account of the recommendations that we keep distance and space from each other physically in order to stop the spread of the pandemic. And this is a scary time. This is a time when we need each other, when we probably would like to run out and hug our friends, when we'd like to gather and sit around kitchen tables. And some of that needs to cease, including our Sunday worship for the time being. We are, however, committed to finding ways of connecting, and I'll share a little bit more later in the service about how we will be doing that. But for the coming weeks, our worship will be streamed online at 10.30 a.m. and we will be gathering in other ways during the week. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Mississauga, Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, and huron wendat peoples. And we acknowledge that in times like this, it is especially important to remember the stewardship of the land, the ways of caring for community that we learn from Indigenous teachings. It is also important to remember that the Wet'suwet'en struggle for protecting their unceded land continues despite calls to not gather in large groups. And so we lift up activists and advocates and protectors of the land, finding new ways to call for justice. Our opening hymn is Found in More Voices. It's number 90, Don't Be Afraid.
our call to worship is Jesus meets us here. Jesus met the blind man at the city gate. Jesus meets us here. Jesus met the crowds at the edge of the sea. Jesus meets us here. Jesus met the leper in his pain. Jesus meets us here. And Jesus met the Samaritan woman in her isolation. Jesus meets us here. For we, too, are the lost and the broken, the hurting and the bleeding. Jesus meets our scars, our fears, our prayers, and our dreams. Jesus meets us here. Let us pray. Gracious God, when it comes to our faith, we know that we have learned from the Samaritan woman who ran through the streets singing your name. So forgive us for the times when we remain silent about what our faith means to us. Forgive us for the times when we choose comfort over bravery. And forgive us for the times we shut people out, missing opportunities to run into you. Teach us to be brave like the Samaritan woman, and saturate our thirst for that which leaves us thirsty. With hope and gratitude we confess. With hope and gratitude we pray. Amen. And we give thanks for God's love that is poured out on us, no matter who we are, no matter where we are on our journey of life or our journey of faith, that we are all God's beloved children. That no matter how our journey has been, what our days have looked like previously, the things we long to erase, the regrets we carry, that God's love is poured out for us, God's forgiveness is offered to each of us. everyone. So normally, right now, we would share the peace. We would go around and give each other a sign of uh, peace and greeting, but that's not a great idea right now. Most of us aren't together to be able to do that. So I wanted to show you an alternative way that you can wish one another peace. Um, and I learned this from uh, a YouTube video of a congregation in California, and it's American Sign Language. So instead of peace be with you as a handshake or whatever, you can sign peace, which is in two parts. You show becoming, like this, and then this is stillness. So becoming still. Andrew, why don't you actually literally come where I was? That would be great. tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink. The well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. 
But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. The word of hope. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds draw us nearer to one another and seem to be flying off the shelves. I looked for edamame and instead bought lima beans. These are difficult times indeed, if I'm reverting to lima beans. In pandemic, perhaps you take what you can get. Things have changed suddenly in the last few days. As the wave of COVID-19 arrives in communities near us, guidelines, rules, and preparations have been rolled out. In these moments, we see how human people can be, panicking, arguing, challenging the wisdom of protocols of social distance and isolation. We need to remember that if these measures of isolation and social distancing work really well, it might appear that they weren't necessary. But if we don't act now, we face the potential for much greater consequences. Moses stood in a community of people in the wilderness, and that's where we find ourselves now, in a wilderness place, somewhere that most of us have never been before. And like the Israelites, we wonder if we will be okay. Will we have enough? Will we be abandoned? Will we be left alone? In the case of Moses, God intervened, leading Moses to a rock at Horeb, a place of refreshment where thirsty people were able to drink, and where their question, is the Lord among us or not, was clearly answered. That as they struggled and felt alone, their question was, of course, is God in this with us? Because God surely can't be here in this mess. If there was a God, would not that being save us? And it's a valid question for us now. Where is God? Who would let this happen? In our second reading, the Samaritan woman discusses water with Jesus, and in this text we see her wonder openly, why are you talking to me? Who are you and why? You from a different social group, a different culture, are talking to me instead of ignoring or shunning to ask Jesus what on earth he's doing at the well with no means to draw up water. In both of these stories, the people need a drink, and they need each other to quench their thirst. And in both of these stories, the refreshment that they need comes from an unexpected place, from someone who they have stopped trusting. So where is God in all of this? God is in neighbors sharing resources, running errands and checking in on each other. God is in the hard conversations about canceling events, appointments. Will we be able to pay rent? Will my job exist anymore? Will my business close? How will I survive three weeks with my own children? In these days and weeks to come, we need to find new ways to hold hope for each other. Because that is our calling, to offer care and to hold hope for those who can't hold it for themselves right now. We will be arranging online gatherings to check in and be together without a whole lot of agenda or content. Just how are you doing in this? What is going on? How are you shaping your days? How are you managing? What do you need? I will share some reflections in these days via social media, and Mani, who works with children and youth, will be creating resources on video for children, um, especially mindful of the, these open-ended days without a lot of schedule and activity for some of our young people. I will also be available by phone and text to check in. We are not alone. We live in God's world and we, together, are facing this. 
And like the woman at the well, like the Israelites in the wilderness, when we search for refreshment, may we remember the God who helps us find what we need in new ways. And to do likewise, coming together in love, finding ways through this wilderness time together. Amen. Jonathan, can you tell me if you can see all four of us? It seems a little bit strange to be sharing an invitation to the offering online, but at this time I think it's important to name that our churches are continuing to offer programs like Out of the Cold and the Food Bank Out of Glen Rhodes and still require a great deal of support. This is a time when many people, um, institutions and businesses are struggling, and so recognizing all of that. Um, name our concerns and our, our hopes that we are able to come together and that those who have resource to sh resources to share are able to continue support for programs like Out of the Cold and the Food Bank and to continue to um, continue their offerings through um, online giving. So if you are a regular church member and usually give through envelopes, there's the opportunity to give through our website via Canada Helps and opportunities as well to, um, to sign up for PAR so that in the future, your givings are automatically deposited into the church bank account to allow us to continue our programming in the many different ways that uh, that, that might be shaped, uh, depending on circumstances. And uh, as we give both here together and uh, however, you, however you are and however you're able, 
We'll sing a song to remind us that this is not necessarily a time to hunker down and uh, hoard things like toilet paper, <laughs> guys, <laughs> but to have a generosity of spirit and to look out for one another. So I'd like to teach you Carrie Meyer's song, uh, There Is Enough. All you need to know is, there is enough. There is, there is enough. enough. Oh, enough and some to share. Oh, oh enough, enough and some to share. So I'll sing you the melody. It goes like this. shared in these days, the gifts that are shared to do the work of the church, and the gifts that are shared in community, the neighbors saying, I have enough, I have extra, what do you need? The ways that we are reaching out and sharing resources with one another. Holy God, let us continue to do this sharing long after the risk of infection has passed, that this may be a time of learning deeply how important it is to give to receive with love. Amen. Let's do a little shuffle here so we can see everybody for this next part. Let's see. Look! Hey, soloists and Scott. Thanks for being here. Okay. Um, Sarah, can you stand kind of right in front of Scott? Hello. Oh, yes. Okay. Nope, that's perfect. Even better. Okay. Um, take one step to this way. Very, very good. Good. Carry on. Just move my coffee. Oh, yeah. I'm try not to knock the coffee over with my head. Um, our sun response for, um, for the prayers is, is the refrain from a piece called We're Not Okay that is by Chad Cecil and Emma Schaefer. And I'm so grateful to them just for this piece of music. Um, I learned it at a, at a conference in, uh, in October and was just so touched by, um, by how this piece could bring people together in difficult and challenging moments of, of talking about hurt and pain. And so we chose this refrain for a time that is a time of transition in our church and now also a time in the world that really feels like a lost and wilderness place. And so Hillary will teach the refrain. And uh, during the prayers, we invite you to join in singing. It's a very simple refrain, and, uh, and I'll turn it over to her. So I'll just teach it once, and then we'll sing it a couple of times. So it goes like this. Here we go. Here we go. 
together in new ways, God, knowing that you are with us however we gather, knowing that you hear our prayers as we join our hearts through computer screens and over phone lines. Today we come together in a place of fear and hope. Images from media of limited resources to care for the sick, cities shut down and needs unmet. We pray for those on the front lines of the crisis, for healthcare workers struggling to provide care, janitors and cleaners seeking to sanitize everything to keep others safe, for those keeping shops open, witnessing panic and overbuying. We pray for parents at home with their children, that we might come together to share resources and encouragement to get through these weeks of school closure. We pray for those who fear they won't be able to pay this rent, their rent this month, for arts workers whose shows have been cancelled, hospitality workers as restaurants are empty, for sex workers who face limited business or even more dangerous working conditions. May our government recognize the need to compensate all workers so that no one faces this struggle alone. sick, that your healing presence will surround them. We pray for those who are grieving that your comfort will be with them, even as they may be grieving in isolation. We pray for those who have been shunned, excluded, or discriminated against because of racist assumptions, fear, and hatred. May this crisis help us to break down divisions and see that we are all your beloved children. We pray for activists and advocates, finding new ways to remind the world that we are still called to cry out for justice, that First Nations communities still say no to the invasion of unceded land. For those most vulnerable due to poverty, illness, or isolation. We pray for those who were already in crisis before pandemic struck and now face fewer resources and supports. For those who are anxious already and find their bodies pulsing with fear. For those who are homeless, those in detention centers and prisons who have no choice about isolating from others. We pray in our community, remembering the family and friends of Margaret Spears, who died yesterday, and giving thanks for the birth of Grayson, a nephew for Rachel. we shine as communities of people, a time that we get creative about connection and reach out in new ways. May this be a time that no one is left behind and all are cared for, 
as we check in with neighbors through new technology and old, like notes left on a doorstep. May this be a time when we hold each other close with our care, not our arms. Holy One, guide us as we find ways through your love. Yeah, you're over there. Oh, I just—I was so ready. I know you were so I'm ready. I'm really pleased that on Facebook Live I'm still as awkward as in. <laughs> that's just—that's very me. We want to give people the authentic experience, right? Yeah, that's completely correct. Uh, thank you, all of you who are joining us. I cannot see who is there. I haven't looked at the other side of this phone yet today. Um, out of an abundance of caution and care for our community, caution and care for our community. All in-person gatherings will be cancelled or moved and we'll keep you updated with all the information that we have. So we won't be meeting in person anytime soon, but we'll keep you posted about future dates. We do still plan on running our food bank, which is at Glen, of Glen Rhodes, very good, on Wednesdays, and Out of the Cold, which takes place here Friday evenings through to Saturday mornings. Now, we're worried about our volunteers who are out of the cold who might have underlying conditions, who are feeling ill, who might be older. For those of you that that applies to, we encourage you to stay home and stay safe. And that might mean that we're a little short-staffed for the upcoming out of the cold shifts. If you are feeling well and are able-bodied, we encourage you to reach out to Gloria, whose information is in the e-blast or you can email myself or Jean Sandin for more information about that, for reaching Gloria. Um, and we encourage you to please volunteer because that program is an essential service to those of us who are in need and we will need volunteers to help run that. Uh, and I think that's all that I have. Oh, I will say something. Oh, yes. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, we will be offering um, either via Zoom or Google Hangouts a time um, most days for people to gather and that information will be posted online and uh, shared by email and anyone will be welcome just to gather so that we have a time together virtually and as I mentioned we'll also be sharing reflections online um, on a regular basis including activities for children. Do you want to say about the post at three? And uh, we will have um, our, our three o'clock service has also been cancelled but we will be um, sharing a brief service online at 3 p.m. and that will be on YouTube, yes? Correct. That, that, okay, yes. So that, that will be on YouTube and so if you'd like to, uh, to tune into our YouTube channel at 3 p.m. Um, you can also watch that and that will remain available for, uh, for watching at times other than 3 o'clock today. And we lift this up as the life and work of the congregation and give thanks to God. I'm going to shift us a little bit here. Look at the lovely leadership we have today. <laughs> okay. Am 
like it. Okay, our closing song today is by Rabbi Menachem Predator. It's called We Will Build This World From Love. Some of you may have sung it in this community before, uh, but let's go over it. So all you need to know is, we will build this world from love. We will build this world from love. And then you do a little la 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 la. So let me sing it for you first. We will build this world from love. La la la. And now, as we continue in the world in our separate ways, may we remember that we are ever connected through God's love that joins us heart to heart, even when we are not meeting hand to hand. And in this time, may we remember we are called to be a people who offer living water, who offer hope and refreshment, who offer peace and possibility. And so, in your own way, go out into the world and offer that hope. Call your neighbors, speak to your friends, stay in touch, and at the same time, protect yourself, staying safe. So in this time that feels contradictory and impossible, remember the love of one who invites, encourages, and empowers us to do great things with love. The one who surrounds us, the one who has walked earthly paths and knows the struggles that we have experienced, knows what it is like to be human and hurting. And may the power of the Holy Spirit encourage and uplift you, support you, and be with you. Go in peace and love. Amen.